Yo, what is good everyone? Welcome back to ACS Sneakers. My name is Aiden. Today we are going to be taking a look at a shoe that I created using Nike by you. But before we do get into that, I do just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has been supporting our content over on Instagram. We've just achieved 1,000 followers, which is absolutely incredible. And we are now going to be giving away a free pair of Air Force Ones to one lucky winner, along with some other goodies as well. So just head over to the ACS Sneakers uh, Instagram page make sure you're keeping an eye out for the competition information which will be going live shortly and let's go ahead and get into the intro So before we do get a good look at the Air Max 1, as customary, let's discuss its history. Now, the Air Max 1 was initially debuted in 1987, having been created by none other than Tinker Hatfield. Now, Tinker Hatfield wanted to create a shoe with visible air technology and was inspired by the Centre George Pompidou building in Paris. Now, as a result of these revolutionary ideas, Tinker Hatfield was almost fired, which is absolutely mind-boggling to think that we may have never had the Air Max 1 at all. Now, as a result of the success of the Air Max 1, we've then gone on to see successful releases such as the Air Max 90, the 95, and the 97 release, to name only a few. And the first time anybody ever saw the Air Max 1 was in a 1987 Nike advert. So let's go ahead and get a better look at the shoes itself. And here we go guys, I now have the Air Max 1 Nike by You box in hand. I really like the minimal aesthetic look of the box itself uh, and the shoe inside in my opinion is absolutely incredible. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the shoe. And here we go guys, I now have the Air Max 1 Nike by You in hand. But before I do get into the shoe itself, I just want to describe how I came into actually having this shoe. Now, the last time we saw the red and white Air Max 1 was back in 2018, and unfortunately I wasn't able to cop for retail. And I was surfing through the Soul Suppliers Facebook page, which if you're not currently a member of, I would highly recommend. It is a fantastic sneaker community over there. So if you are looking for any type of engagement group, that would be one that I would highly recommend. Now, when I was surfing through the page itself, I did see that somebody had recreated this iconic look and I just had to do it for myself. So I went over to the Nike website, hit up the Nike by you and recreated this iconic look. So let's go ahead and get into the shoe. Kicking us off with the toe box area, which is created out of what I can only describe it to be as a nylon meshing type of material, which is extremely soft to touch, but also is very breathable, which is going to be a fantastic asset, especially as we approach those hot summer days. This could be an absolute summer must. Now, around the toe box, you will see there is this red type of suede material. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to confirm that this is exactly suede on the website itself. However, it does definitely have the suede type of look and overall feel. Switching then to the midfoot of the shoe itself, which you will see we have the red Nike swoosh in that same type of suede material. And switching then to the upper of the shoe, which is very similar to what we saw on the front end of the shoe in terms of its overall feel, texture and consistency. Now, like I mentioned on the front of the shoe, I'm not able to confirm that it is a suede material despite doing some research online. However, it does have everything that I would expect a suede shoe to have in terms of the overall feel. So for the purpose of this video, I will say that the upper of the shoe is comprised of a sail suede material. If we then switch to the midsole of the shoe, it is completely white with a translucent air unit at the back. And switching to the outsole, it is a sail and red rubber that has been used to comprise the outsole. And switching now to the laces at the front of the shoe, which are completely white. And above the laces, we have a nylon tongue with the Nike Air branding in black. Now, the sock liner is completely white and extremely cushioned in my opinion. It is super soft and very comfortable to wear. And around the sock liner, there is a velvet type of material which definitely adds to the premium look and feel to this shoe. The insole of the shoe is black and has the Nike Air branding. And we now switch to the heel of the shoe, which you can see the usual Nike Air branding on top of a suede material with a red suede material to finish. Now, the left shoe does stay true to the usual Air Max 1 Nike Air branding. However, on the right, we have customized it to read Nike Air Raid, and I'm very happy to have my very first ever customized shoe in my collection. Moving on then to my opinions of the shoe itself, I would start off with the most important aspect which is the comfortability and I must advise that this shoe wasn't very comfortable right out of the box. I did feel that it did require some breaking in time and now I have broken the shoe in, it is a lot more comfortable. However, the shoe does feel very tight when you do get it out of the box. I'm not sure if that's specifically how the factory laces up the shoes but in my opinion the shoe just felt very constraining and I wasn't very impressed when I first put the shoe on. 
Moving on then to its durability, in terms of the overall wear, I have worn this for a good few hours and I have felt that the shoe has held up really well. It has supported me in the right way and I have felt that the shoe is going to be durable. Now, time will tell us whether that opinion is correct, but based on a very small observation, it has held up very well so far. Moving on then to the rating in terms of the actual sizing, I would say going up a half size is a, a minimum, if not a whole full size up. Now, I for one do have wide feet, uh, so that can play into whether or not the sizing does fit true to size, but I would say that I was very constrained when trying to wear this shoe and had to loosen the laces completely, relace the shoe back up, and only then was I able to actually wear the shoe for a long period of time. So I would recommend going at least a half size up. In terms of my overall rating of the shoe itself, I would definitely give the shoe a solid 7 out of 10. It does have a lot going for it and it does have that retro 1987 look. However, as I've mentioned in terms of the actual sizing and the fact that it is going to attract lots of dirt and dust and every other conceivable issue that you're going to have with a suede type of material, they do start to bring it down a few points in my opinion. Now let's go ahead and get a better look at the shoe itself. I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone that stuck around to this point in the video. Please make sure you do enter our giveaway over on Instagram, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that bell notification and I hope to see you again in the next one. Thank you.